If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And I want to talk to you today about spiritual gifts. About spiritual gifts. Folks, if you are a born-again Christian, God has given you a spiritual gift. And most people have more than one spiritual gift. And I will say this also, there are times in your life where you are in certain situations and you may not, may not have that gift. You have to uh, use that gift for his glory. I've been on mission trips when, you know, certain needs were there. And, you know, I'm not telling the missionary that's not my gift. I'm going to tell him, I'm going to roll up my sleeve and say, what do you need? Okay. But we all have spiritual gifts. And they're, these gifts are found in three different places. Uh, this text that we are seeing today, Romans chapter 12, has seven spiritual gifts that we will be discussing. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12 has spiritual gifts there. and Ephesians chapter 4 has spiritual gifts. Basically, there are 19 spiritual gifts that you can have as a Christian. And by the way, none of you have them all. I've met a person or two that thinks they have them all, and I'll be discussing that in my first point. But let me give you the outline. Number one, talking to us about spiritual gifts, you need the proper attitude. Folks, attitude is everything. Attitude is everything. If you come here not expecting anything, that's exactly what you're going to get. Okay, you've already made up your mind, I'm going to punch the clock, I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. But if you come here with the right attitude, you will worship the Lord our God. Number two, the proper relationship. The proper relationship. And folks, I'm just telling you, we are in this together. All right, we are all children of God that, that know God and that have accepted God. We are all on the same team, and we need to love and encourage one another. And number three, the proper service. And these are the actual gifts, the actual gifts. You know, the work of Jesus in the world uh, uh, is the hands and feet of those who belong to him. He sends his servants with and commissions them to serve and minister in the local church. He equips them for service by giving them, giving them a specific spiritual gift that is uh, to be used in pointing people to Jesus Christ and his church. Devotion to the Lord and, faith, and faithful active ministry are inseparable. Let me say it again. Devotion to our Lord and faithful active ministry are inseparable. Service to God brings honor to him and brings a blessing for us. When you know your spiritual gift, when you are in your spiritual gift, when you are doing your spiritual gift, that's where uh, you get the most satisfaction in your spiritual life. It is the outflow of what true worship is. True worship cannot be separated from true service to our Lord and Savior. No spiritual gift is insignificant. No gift is more important than uh, any of the spiritual gifts. Every growing New Testament church needs every member to use their spiritual gift given to them to help the church grow and to meet every need the church has. Let's look at Paul's writing of the importance of spiritual gifts in the life of a believer, in the life of a church. Number one, spiritual gifts, a proper attitude, or excuse me, the proper attitude. Romans 12, verse 3. For I say... Notice the word there. He's changing thoughts here. We talked about true worship last week. For I say, through the grace given to me and to everyone who is uh, among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So the first thing he points out is grace. Folks, we are all under grace. We are all under grace. It's God's riches at Christ's expense. You came to Christ by the grace of God, by the grace through faith you have. And to everyone who's among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Folks, we as Christians need to be humble. Humility needs to be a part of our lives. 
We don't need to brag on ourselves. We don't need to give everybody our spiritual resume. We don't need to judge other people's gifts. We need to be humble about the gift that God has given us. Matter of fact, the opposite of humility is pride. Pride. And folks, we should not be prideful. The Bible speaks against pride. It's not about us. It's about God. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about His church. And if we are going to brag on anyone, let's brag on God and Jesus Christ. And it says, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. And by the way, I have, I, I have known people that are legends in their own mind. <laughs> they drive me crazy. All they do is talk about themselves. All they do is brag on themselves. And folks, nobody likes to be around a person like that. We are all members of the body of Christ. No one person here is more important than another person. And we need to be humble. And the other thing, we always tend to criticize others, but never really look at our own lives. Okay, we don't want anybody pointing out our faults. But here's the key, folks. Here's the key. Listen to what I'm fixing to say. God already knows you. God already knows everything you do. He knows everything you say. He knows everything you think. Okay? So you're not fooling Him. Okay? It is about God. It's not about you. It's not about me. And we should not think more highly than uh, that we do it about ourselves. But think soberly, which means seriously, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Folks, God has given everyone that has been born into the kingdom of, God, give, kingdom of God a spiritual gift. And folks, you should cherish that gift. You need to know that gift. I ask people uh, frequently, what is your spiritual gift? Well, I'm just not sure. Well, folks, you need to know that. And we're going to help you with that at the end of the service. 1 Peter chapter 5. Hold your finger there and go to 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5. Verse 5. 1 Peter 5, 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Okay? And I know I was young and dumb and thought I knew everything. Okay? Then I got married. <laughs> okay? And I realized I'm not near, not that I didn't want to get married. That probably didn't come out right, okay? <laughs> but I'm simply saying the responsibility was with me now, not my father, not my mother. And they knew a whole lot more than I did, okay? And hindsight's 2020. But listen, younger people, submit yourself to elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, Okay? Clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You want God's grace in your life? Just be humble. Don't brag on yourself. Okay, brag on God. Verse 6, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. If God wants to exalt you, he will. If he doesn't, he won't. Don't sit around waiting for him to do it. Okay? It doesn't matter what gift you have, it is important. It is very important. Casting all your cares on Him, for He cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, serious. Be persistent, consistent, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And folks, I am telling you, God unites and Satan divides. God wants... To, to you to use your gift to, to the full, fullness of the measure that you have get, given. But Satan tells you, look at other people's gifts. Look at them. And, and sometimes we get envy in our hearts. 
All right? Envy in our hearts because of other people's gifts. And we should not do that. That is Satan doing that. Resist Satan, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering, uh, sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Folks, be humble. Be humble as a Christian. Don't be proud. Don't be two-faced about things. What, what you do for God is important. And what God has given you to do is important. Just use your spiritual gift for God's glory and be humble. So, proper attitude is very, very important. And number two, not only the proper attitude, but the proper relationship. Relationship. Folks, we all are in relationships. Every one of us. We are talking to someone, whether it's work or family or business or playtime or, or hobbies or what. We are with people. And folks, God uses people to get His work done. There shouldn't be that jealousy over other people's gifts. And it says in verse 4, For as we have many members in one body, okay, He, he is comparing the spiritual gifts to your body. All right? When you think about what your body is made up of, it is incredible. Used to you had a GP, uh, uh, you know, a doctor for, for just everything. You just had one doctor. Now you have a doctor for every part you have in your body. And, and he is saying here, it's kind of like, you know, members uh, of a football team, okay? And I know it's a little sad, all right, the Arkansas and the Sooners, okay? But I just want to draw a comparison there. Everyone playing football on the field is important. Those linemen that don't block, that running back doesn't hit the holes. If they don't block, the quarterback gets sacked. The wide receivers, everybody on the field has something to do. And they are supposed to be working as a team and together. And the same thing is true, folks, in God's church. We are on God's team. We are doing God's work. We are winning for God. Uh, Chuck told me the other day we have now have over 700 members in our church. And you think about that. We have everything we need to be God's New Testament church right here in the River Valley. But some folks don't show up on game day. Some folks sit on the bench on game day. Some folks just watch everyone else doing it. And I'm going to say this right here and right now, and I'll say it again. If every one of our membership would do one thing and exercise their spiritual gift for the Lord, we would have no needs whatsoever in our church. That is God's design for the church. Everybody has an assignment. Everybody has a gift. We are one, one body. But all members do not have the same function, for instance, go back to the body. Your ear, you know, everybody can't be an ear. Everybody can't be an eye. You want to not have balance, lose your big toe. See, we think of big toes as just ugly, okay? You look at a big toe and you think, man, that is ugly. But you try to walk without your big toe, folks. You try to go somewhere without your heart. It doesn't work. We are all important. Verse 5, so we being many are one body in Christ. Notice one body twice already. Individual members of one another. Folks, we need one another. We need one another. We are, uh, you know, uh, on the same team. We are looking towards that same goal. There are ministries in this church, and I'm telling you, there are literally uh, many, many ministries that you can be a part of. And if we all would just get in a ministry and do it for the glory of God, I am telling you, we would not have a need here. We should complement one another. There is no competition at church. Same thing with churches. We are not competing with anybody in the River Valley. We need to be who we are in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what these other churches are doing or teaching or saying. 
Okay? We are the body of Christ. We are one unit. One unit. And I'm telling you, uh, you know, just like yesterday uh, when we were out at Chaffee Crossing, I mean, after I left, I, I like to do the early shift. One, one is it's a lot cooler at 8 o'clock in the morning. But later on, there were a line of people wanting to give balloon, get, get balloon characters. And we just kept giving these things out and giving things, these things out. People have come to our church because we are out there. We need to be all over the river valley talking about God and inviting people to our church. Why? Because you are a member of the body of Christ. And it is so important that you use your spiritual gift. God has brought you to this church. God has brought you to this place in this time. And there is something that God wants you to do. What is your passion? What do you love to do? And the way you know is, folks, through prayer and through Bible reading. And if you don't know your spiritual gift, I am telling you, uh, you can take a spiritual gift survey. It's right in your bulletin, below the outline. The instructions are there, and you can find out your own spiritual gift. And I took mine this week. And my top four are the same ones I had four years ago. The same ones, but you know what, Steve? They are not in the same order. They have changed orders over 10 years. God changed that. The one I took this past week, uh, my number one is wisdom. This week is wisdom. The one God gives me, all right? Not that I just have wisdom this week. Hopefully, <laughs> through 10 years of growing in 18 and a half years of pastoring, I'm a little wiser than I was when I came here. And I think those who had been here when I was here when I came, I think you would say yes. My second one is prophecy. My second one is prophecy. That's the preaching of the Word. All right? My third one is discernment. I know when people are lying to me, okay? You may say it with a straight face, but God has given me a lot more discernment than I would really like to have at times. And my fourth one is teaching. Even though fourth, and, and I am not, I mean, I am a teacher, preacher, but I'm telling you, prophecy and teaching, they are somewhat of the same there, but there are differences. So the key is everything we need in this church, those spiritual gifts are here. We just have to identify them and get people functioning in the strengths of their spiritual gifts. Ephesians 4. Look at Ephesians 4. These are so important. Ephesians 4. This is Paul writing, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called. What is that? You're a Christian. Walk worthy. Be a Christian. Act like a Christian. Talk like a Christian. Go where Christians go. With all lowliness, there's that humility. With gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing one another in love. Folks, that's giving people the benefit of the doubt. Don't always be negative. Don't always be skeptical. All right? Give people a break sometimes. You need to extend that grace that God has given you. Has given you. And it says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Folks, that is so important in church work. Satan wants to get right in the middle of churches. Satan wants to divide churches. Satan wants to divide groups of people. Satan wants to split churches, and folks, he's done that, and we do not need to participate in that. We need unity in the body of Christ. It doesn't mean we can't disagree, but how you disagree is so important. Disagree agreeably. We have a body life meeting. We have a place where you can talk and express uh, your opinion on things. But when the church decides something, go with it. The body of Christ is who decides. We are the church of God. So he's saying, 
bear with one another, love one another, keep unity in the spirit of peace. Folks, we know the opposite of peace is war. And war hurts everyone, folks. There should not be fights in arguments, in sides, in churches. We must pray to keep that out. Keep Satan out of our church. Now look at verse 4. There is one body. Folks, that is the church. One body. That's the body of Christ. One spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. As you are called with one hope. Our hope is in Jesus, folks. It's in Jesus. One hope of your calling. One Lord. That's God. One faith. That's faith. One baptism. Matter of fact, I was baptized three times, but I got dunked twice, okay? Dunked means you weren't really saved, okay? But the third time, I was scripturally baptized. One God, one Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. It's not about us. It's really not even about Rye Hill Baptist Church. We are the church but we are about God. We're about saving souls. We are about discipling people. We are about being God's army, God's foot soldiers, God's mouth, God's hands. That's what he's saying. God who is above all, through all, and in you all. Folks, the importance of unity in the church is huge. It is huge. I pray, I pray that we will protect unity in the body of Christ. So we see the proper attitude. We see the proper relationship. And let's see now the proper service. The proper service. Look at verse 6. Having then gifts that differ. Okay? We all don't have the same gift. And let me tell you what can happen. Someone with the gift of prophecy may be fellowshipping with someone with the gift of mercy. And here's the conversation. It's black and white. It's black and white. No, man, they don't need to go, oh, can I remind you of Paul and Barnabas? John Mark? Can I remind you the one who wrote this scripture had an attitude? Okay, he was human just like us. I'm not picking on him at all. He said, John Mark quit us once. I don't want him. That's exactly what he said. Read the word. And Barnabas, what does Barnabas' name mean? Son of encouragement. So here we got a prophet over here saying, man, he's a bum. He's he, he going to walk out on sin. Don't take a chance on him. Then we have Mr. Nice, Mr. Clean, Mr. Barnabas. Come on, Paul. Give him another chance. Nope. You got one with prophecy, you got one with mercy, and there goes the clash. Folks, and that's what Satan does. He doesn't want you liking me. He doesn't want you liking God's work. He doesn't want you liking certain. You know, you look at certain people and, you know, you'll say, I don't really like them. Well, why don't you like them? I don't know. But I just don't really like them. Maybe it's their eyes, the way they look at me. And Satan will cause these divisions in our church, folks. And, and it really, I am telling you, folks, it should not be. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given us, let us use them. Folks, respect other people's gifts. Respect them. Missy told me right before we came out here uh, two things that we need, and I'm just going to make the plug right here. For our carnival on Wednesday night, we need people to work booths and we need people in the kitchen. Guess what? Some of you have the gift of service or the gift of ministry. If you have the gift of service or the gift of ministry, here you go. There's a place for you to serve. So you help us meet those needs. That's just one example in our church. I'm sharing with you seven, and we don't have time to go through all the gifts. Uh, matter of fact, some break it down like this. There are speaking gifts, there are sign gifts, and there are service gifts. Some scholars break it down like that. And also, uh, some believe that the, uh, the sign gifts were apostolic gifts, and they are no longer working 
today. Not that people can't be healed or, or, or things like that. Uh, and, and again, you know, you just, you just have to, uh, you know, discern. You just have to figure out what God wants you to do. All right? I don't discourage anyone operating inside of their gifts. But I'm simply saying all these gifts are supposed to be used at the church for the glory of God. So having these gifts, number one, prophecy. Prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. All right, prophesy is what I'm doing. Thus saith the Lord. Now, in the Old Testament, it, men prophesied of things to come. They prophesied in the Old Testament, and a lot of them came true in the New Testament. But now it is basically the preaching of the Word. Second one, ministry. Now, I already mentioned this. Ministry is service. It's helping people. It's working with your hands. Okay, you don't have to be on stage. You can be behind the scenes, okay, behind the scenes, working with people. The next one is, he, yeah, ministry. Let us use it for ministering. He who teaches in teaching. Folks, we have a lot of gifted teachers in this church. And I, my prayer is that as we grow, we can plug in all the teachers, Matter of fact, you know what we probably need to do? We probably need to have a list of teachers that aren't teaching so that when we have that need, we can plug those teachers in. And as we grow, we will need more teachers. Verse 8, and he who exhorts, exhortation. What is that? Encourages. I've already talked about how important encouraging people is he who gives with liberality and see everybody thinks giving is strictly a money issue all right people have the gift of giving and it is money but he's talking about giving of your time also giving of your talents if there's a specific ministry or or a spe specific uh, mission thing we're going on and that's your strength you need to go on it you need to help out in giving with liberality, and he who leads with uh, uh, with diligence, leader is leadership. Some even call it administration. You lead, and people follow. We need leaders in our church. And the next one is he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And folks, mercy simply means that you know you you are for the underdog. Okay, mercy is you, you help when somebody's suffering. You don't just say, I'll pray for you. Okay, you do something about it. You make a cake or you send them a card or you go make a personal visit. And we need people with mercy in our church. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Got to wrap this up. Ephesians 4, verse 11. And he gave some to be apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Look at this. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Folks, that's why we uh, have the new members class. If you're a new member, we want you to know the ministries that are in this church. The ministries that you can be a part of. But you need to go to that class when we have it again. And it says, for the edifying of the body of Christ edifying, lifting up, helping the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God into a perfect man. We're not talking about sinless perfection. We're talking about Christian maturity to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. The fullness of Christ. Folks, if you are not serving somewhere, you are not experiencing that fullness being everything you can be in God's kingdom. Galatians 5, and I close with this. Galatians 5, and you know these are the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5. Well, let me get there. There we go. Galatians 5, verse 22. These are the fruits you need to use 
when exercising your spiritual gifts. These are the fruits. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Man, do everything you do out of love. Joy. Joy is not happenstance, folks. Joy comes within. Have joy in what you do. Peace. We need to be peacemakers. Long-suffering. We need to be patient and bring others along. Kindness. This world needs more kindness. We need more kindness. Goodness. That's just doing the right thing, folks. Doing the right thing. Faithfulness. We need faithful workers. Gentleness. Gentleness and self-control. And you know, the biggest problem I have in my mouth, at my life, I just said it, <laughs> is my tendency to say what I am thinking. And folks, self-control is, Mike, shut up. Don't say it. And, and really, folks, most of the time, I'm just, you know, joking or trying to be funny, one of those two. But the Lord, again, we have a constant conversation about this. Self-control. Think about what you say, folks. Because it can hurt. It can hurt, and you can discourage others around you. Folks, there is a survey a survey. If you look, everybody look at your bulletin right now, if you would. Open your bulletin if you've been taking notes in it. We are asking every member or attender, every member or attender, to take our spiritual gift survey. Look at it right below. The instructions are there. The barcode is there. And it only takes about 20 minutes. Okay, don't rush through it. But I pray that this week, this week, you will take that spiritual gift survey. You need an email address so that we can email you. I know Scott had a lot to do with this. Scott, Lauren Chitty is the one, uh, you know, making all this happen. All right, she is the one compiling all these things. And folks, this is so important uh, for the life of our church. Can you imagine Okay, and we're not talking about 700 members, but let's just say last week we had 435. Can you imagine if 435 people in our church all operated within their spiritual gift? Folks, I'm just telling you, we couldn't help but grow because there's so much talent. There's so much gifting in this church. And again, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, suggest something here, but wouldn't it be crazy if everyone started doing that and God just started blessing and blessing and blessing and we again had to go to two services? Amen. Folks, that's not what I came here for. All right, that is not what I came here for. I just want to be the church that God wants us to be. And we can be that church if everybody's operating within their spiritual gift. Father, thank you for the day. and God, I thank you for your word. Man, your word is right. It is yes. It is amen. God, I thank you for the spiritual gifts. And God, I do pray that everyone here, everyone here would this week take the time. And they may have to call somebody. Maybe they don't have an email, but God, I pray that they would talk to their kids or a teenager. Or just talk to somebody in church and God will help them. I truly believe we have folks that would come out to their house and help them do that. Well, God, I pray that we just participate in this. And God, I pray that we would all use our spiritual gift for God's glory. And God, if there's one here that doesn't know you, God, I pray today would be their day of salvation. God, thank you. Thank you for this time that we have together. Thank you for just who you are and what you are doing. And God, we love you. We praise you. This is your church. This is your invitation. God, I pray that you'd use it for your glory and your honor. God, I pray your people would just be obedient. Just obedient. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoke to you in any way, would you come?